the need for speed. Now, most of us are going for M.2s, but they are very expensive. Have you ever thought about an SSD? Yeah, a solid state drive, this little baby here. Now, this is a one terabyte one, and it costs around about 50 quid. Now, if you bought an M.2 for about the same size, it would cost at least double that at the moment. Obviously, things are getting cheaper, especially things like this, but the SSDs at the moment are dirt cheap. So, in this video, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to install an SSD and showing you the performance, how fast she can read write. Now, it says here, this is a SATA 3 2.5 SSD solid state drive. Read speed is up to 500 megabits. So we are going to test the read and the write speed just to see how fast she can actually perform. Link in the video description. So we are going to be doing an install. I am going to actually show you how easy it is to actually install one of these. You only need two cables and you don't even have to screw them down. As long as they're fixed to something like laying on the bottom of the actual PC or something like that and you're not going to move it about, you can just, you can just let them hang. Yeah, it won't hurt them. And we are going to do a bench test just to see what she really performed like. Now, something to bear in mind before we get into it, and that is this is SATA 3. You need the latest SATA, something that can run really fast to get the best performance out of this. Now, is backward compatible, but you won't necessarily get the performance speed on something that's quite an old PC. It will still work and still give you a better performance than, say, a spinning disc. Yes, it will still give you a better performance, but if you can, make sure you've got the latest motherboard with at least SATA 3 on it. So uh, with that, let's see what she actually looks like once I've done the unboxing. Shouldn't take too long anyway. There's not a lot to it really. I can't pronounce the name. It says Vix Zero. I think that's how you pronounce it. Vix Zero. I could be totally wrong. I did actually watch a couple of videos on YouTube and I still couldn't make out what they were saying about the name of the company. And yes, they did send it to me. But like I said, I've had a look online and at the moment they're about £50, which is dirt cheap in my opinion, especially for something so fast. Now, it comes with a screwdriver, which is handy, so you can actually mount it to something, whatever you're mounting it to. Comes with a solid state drive user manual. I uh, won't be bothering with that. Comes with four little screws, so you can actually mount it to something, like a cage, something like that and the actual unit itself. Like I said, I will show you how to install it, so don't panic. And this is it. It's quite light. It says Fix Zero, Solid State Drive, SATA 3 2.5 SSD, P500. And at the time of making this video, they have another one that does up to two terabytes of storage. Yes, two terabytes. Well, that's unusual. What's that little label doing there? Is that supposed to be there? And that's it. So all you need is power, which is that one now. So you need a power connection from your actual power supply and a connection to the actual motherboard for read-write. Now, something else you might not know, just in case you don't know, is depending on your hardware, like for instance your motherboard, it can disable some of your SATA connections depending on what is installed like your m.2s now for me two of my sata connections are disabled because i'm using m.2s in the slots that they would be occupying so they're disabled automatically but i do have quite a few sata connections anyway so i don't have to use them to i can use any one i like so uh with that let's do an installation and see how easy it is to install and also see how fast she can actually run Install, I've already took the covers off, just saving a little bit of time. And the first thing you need is power. Well, it's not the first thing, but for me, I was installing the power first. Now, this only connects in one way, so make sure you plug it in the right way round. It's got a little L shape on one end. The same as with this, it will only plug in one way again. So make sure you turn it around the right way. And then all you need to do is find a way of feeding the single cable not the power cable, through the case to the other side.
Now, I didn't actually fix mine down. I just let it loose because mine's not staying in there. But I wanted to show you where it could go or possibilities. You could just use double-sided tape if you wanted to. You don't need to screw it down. Now, once you put the cable through to the other side, you need to plug it in to your SATA connection. I have several. And I just plugged it in one of the random ones. Didn't use the ones on the very bottom because they've been disabled because of my M.2. So you need to make sure, like I said earlier, that your SATA drive or your SATA connections are not disabled. Once you've done that, you're basically good to go. Now, if you've never done this before, you will need to initialize the drive first. It's quite easy to do. Just go into disk management like I just did. And if you've done it correctly, it will come up with a pop-up so you can just initialize it. Set it all up. All we need to write new volume basically and give it a letter. I called mine Z so I know which one it is. Just to make it easy for me to find with all my other drives. Mm, Z. Easy enough, isn't it? Bench testing. Now I have done a few different types of bench testing. I copied a file from my C drive to the actual hard drive and then I copied it off again back to the C drive just so I've got an idea of roughly the speed and performance of the actual unit itself. Now I also had some software to do read write speed checks as well. One is from Blackmagic which I use quite a bit and I find that very useful and that works extremely well and gives me a very accurate figure. Some might say it doesn't give you a true figure, but for me, it seemed to be spot on. In fact, it performed better than I thought it would be anyway, even with the copy, read, write of moving an actual file for me to be, it was performing a lot better than I expected it to. I was expecting it to be under 500, especially on the actual read bit, but it was over 500, and I was well impressed with that. And the other piece of software I used was Crystal Disk Mark. And again, it gave me the same reading, or roughly the same reading, as my Blackmagic one. 556 read, I thought was excellent. And just over 500 write, again, excellent. Perfect for gamers, in my opinion, that is. Especially if you're one of those people who like to go out and about and take your hard drive with you and insert it into another computer. Now, if you are one of those people, I have another option for you, which is this. This is a SATA free adapter. This adapts the SATA connection to a USB connection. Now, this one has two ends on it. It has a standard USB connection. Not sure why you'd want to use that anyway, but you'll see it. And it also has a USB 3.0 connection. And I did test it. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you how easy it is to connect. And you go like that, like that, and it doesn't work because it's upside down. Like that, like that, job done. Right, so you have the long one for your power and the short one for your connection to your PC. Yeah, make sure you get it around the right way. Like that. Job done. This is only about £15. It's not expensive to buy. So if you need an adapter because you want to take the hard drive with you to someone else or plug it into someone else's PC, you can. Pop on one of these. So you can either put it inside your PC and it will give you a faster read write or you can plug it into one of these. Now, it won't be as fast as plugging it directly into your motherboard through the SATA connection, but it will still be faster than, say, using a conventional hard drive, a mechanical hard drive, yeah? A spinner, whatever you want to call it. I was very impressed with the speed. Hopefully you are. Now, my verdict on this little baby. Now, this is the one terabyte. Like I said earlier, they do do up to a two terabyte one. Now, it does say it does a write speed of up to 500 megabits per second. Now, I found it done just over that. So I was well impressed. And also... Its read speed is estimated at 550. Again, I had it just over. So, uh, yeah, very impressed. Now, like I said earlier, I did look on their website and it said up to 2 terabytes. But, apparently, they do up to 4 terabytes. But I didn't see it actually on the website at the time of making this video. But they do say they do do a 4 terabyte one. Which I would like to try, actually. 
I prefer the bigger one. One terabyte is okay, but you can't get a lot on there nowadays. Yeah, back in the day you could have done. Yeah, you know, one terabyte used to be humongous, but nowadays it's not so humongous. The other thing I liked about SSDs is the reliability because there's no mechanical parts. If you drop it, chances are it's not going to break. I wouldn't advise you to do that, but should you accidentally drop it, you're not going to break it. Hopefully, anyway. And reliability. Plus, you can just stick it in your pocket and carry it anywhere, whereas a mechanical hard drive, you can't. The same with the M.2. They're a little bit more delicate than something like this. So with that, yeah, definitely gets my thumbs up. It does exactly what they claim it does, and maybe even a little bit more, and it just works. It's plug and play, really. You just need to configure it once, job done. You don't have to configure it again. So with that, as always, links in the video description. They might be affiliated links, but they don't cost you any more money whatsoever. And if you like this video or any of my videos, why don't you subscribe, click on the bell for notification and give this video or any of the other videos a thumbs up. Link in the video description for this little baby, in case you want to buy one or even buy the bigger ones. Me personally, I'll go for the bigger ones. Thank you very much for watching.